Morning. Um, yesterday morning, uh, I woke. I told a few of this. I woke up yesterday morning and I had no clue what day it was. <laughs> Have you ever had a morning like that? I literally, you know, the alarm went off and I was like, "What? What is today? What, what am I supposed to be doing?" And then I think I think it's the weekend. And and I don't. And then I. I realized it was Wednesday. So this morning I woke up and I, I knew what day it was and it was Thursday. Things seemed to be going well and I got to breakfast and they were like, Pastor Dan, you didn't do your hair. And I was like, I forgot something. So um, the morning wasn't going quite as well as I thought it was, but um, I know we're all tired. Uh, it's you know a full and hectic schedule, but um, I'm thankful for, for God's strength and God's sustaining power. I want to uh, start off with a little story this morning. Um, there was a uh, a pastor uh, walking through a small town one day, and he, he noticed there was a group of boys, uh, probably eight or nine of them at least, sort of all gathered around, and he was sort of curious what they were doing, and he realized that they, they had a dog, and he was sort of concerned that they were all younger boys, like eight, nine, ten, eleven maybe, and so he was sort of concerned that these boys were maybe not treating the dog kindly, and so he wanted to go over and check them out, so he, he walked over, and he said, you know, he said, guys, what are you doing? And they said, oh, they said, um, this is just an old stray dog in town and we all want him, uh, so we uh, decided to have a little contest to see who gets him. So uh, what, what we're doing is we're seeing who can tell the biggest lie, and whoever can tell the biggest lie wins the dog. Well, the pastor sort of, you know, he became concerned, and he basically launched into like a 10-minute sermon on lying, and then he finished up. He says, he says, boys, when I was your age, I would never tell a lie. Well, there was a moment of silence, and, and then the youngest boy looked around, and they all started to nod, and he said, okay, pastor, you can have the dog. <laughs> we're talking about lying this morning, and obviously it's something that we're all familiar with. How many of you, let's just get this out of the way, how many of you have told a lie before? Raise your hand. <laughs> so, we are amongst a room full of liars. As you look to your left and your right, you're sitting by a liar. All right, we've all done it. We've all experienced being lied to. And all of us would probably say, hey, I can agree, lying's wrong. Like, how many would say, just say, yeah, lying's wrong, I agree with that. All right, most of us would agree with that. We, we get that. But for whatever reason, even though we believe it's wrong, we sometimes still lie. And so we're going to look into lying this morning. What is a lie? A lie is a deliberate misrepresentation of the truth. All right. So lying is when we deliberately misrepresent the truth because you can say something that's true in order to deceive somebody, can't you? Right? Have you ever said something that was factually accurate but you knew that in the way you said it it was going to be deceptive? All right, that still counts, all right? A lie is a deliberate misrepresentation of the truth. Now, when we think about lying, there's lots we could say. There's lots of messages I could preach about lying. The Bible has lots to say. We could kind of get into all the theoretical discussions of when is it okay to lie? Is it ever okay to lie? But what if it was to save somebody's life? Like, you know, we love to sort of have these theoretical discussions about things. And we could do that this morning, and you can do that at some other time. But I don't want to do that this morning. What I want us to do is just consider three simple truths, three things about lying that I think will help us understand God's perspective, understand ourselves, and hopefully transform the way that we talk in, when it comes to telling the truth. So the first thing that I wanna, want us to think about this morning is that God detests lying. Let's just start out because, you know, we don't want to just have our opinion on lying. We can think it's right or wrong or sometimes okay or not okay. But we just want to look this morning, what does God think? What does God have to say about lying? Well, we can know from God's word that God detests lying. The scriptures are very clear. I want us to look at um, Proverbs 6, uh, 16 this morning. All right, maybe it'll come up. Proverbs 6.16 says, There are six things that the Lord hates. No, seven things he detests. So six things God hates, Solomon says, seven that he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, and a false lit witness who pours out lies. A person who sows discord among brothers. And so... Solomon writing to his son there, he says there's, there's six things that God hates, seven that he detests, and two of them, right, mention what? Lying. 
All right, he says that he hates a lying tongue and a false witness who pours out lies. So we can see from God's word this morning that lying is something that God detests. Why does God hate lying? Somebody, somebody help me out here this morning. Why do, why do you think it is that God feels this way about lying? All right, lying is contrary to who God is. All right, God is truth. He is the source of all truth. God cannot lie because He is truth. All right, it is contrary to His nature, it stands in opposition to His will, and He is the source of all truth. He never lies. Uh, Proverbs 12 22 says, The Lord detests lying lips, but He delights in people who are trustworthy. And so we can kind of just step back this morning and say, lying is something that God takes seriously. And so if lying is something that God takes seriously, then we should what? Take it seriously. seriously. Alright, if if something matters to God, if something is important to God, then it should be important to us. Why? Because we have been called into His kingdom, right? We have been brought into a living relationship with God through Jesus Christ, right? We have have become His children, right? And so what matters to God, what's important to God should be important to us. Lying is something that God takes seriously. And I want to suggest for a moment, you know, we've looked at what Solomon said about lying, but you might say, well, okay, that was just Solomon's perspective. You know, that's just Proverbs. Well, let's, let's look at what Jesus had to say. John chapter 8. Uh, I just want to zero in on verse 44 this morning. Uh, and just to kind of set a little context there, in, in John chapter 8, in, in, this, in this section of John chapter 8, uh, John is describing for us a, a, a sort of conversation, if you will. Uh, it was more of like of a throwdown, actually, that Jesus has with the Pharisees, with this group of religious leaders. And, and they sort of have, are having an argument or a discussion, if you will, about origins. And Jesus is proclaiming his origins, that he is God. And they are, of course, not believing that. And so they want to make fun of his origins because they're like saying basically Jesus you don't even know who your father is right you remember you know your mom married she was pregnant before you got married like we don't even know who your dad is all right that's kind of what they're what they're doing with Jesus and so Jesus kind of just comes back to them and talks to them about their father and so here he is talking to the religious leaders so they're sort of having like a who's your daddy thing um and it's pretty interesting. You need just if you just want to go back and read that later today. It's 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 pretty pretty cool. John chapter eight verse forty four. So Jesus is speaking to these Pharisees and they're having this argument of origins. And he, he says, "You have questions about my father. Let me tell you about your dad." He says, "You belong to your father." Okay, that's that makes sense. The devil. <laughs> what? I mean, Jesus was pretty straightforward. He says, "You belong to your father, the devil." And you want to carry out your father's desire. And he says, you are doing the work of your father, Satan. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is literally, what? No truth in him. All right, he is the complete opposite of God. God is truth. He is the source of truth. He personifies truth. And yet, Satan, there is no truth in him. It says, when he lies, he speaks his native language. I love that, that translation there. When he lies, he speaks his native language. He says, it's just natural for Satan to lie. It emanates from who he is. So he says, when he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar, and he is the father of all lies. He is the father of lies. All right, so when we lie, when we misrepresent the truth, when we tell something that's false, who are we acting like? Somebody help me out. All right, yeah, it's not comfortable to say, is it? We are imitating Satan, right? We, we are doing his work because he is the father of all lies. He is the original liar and the original originator of all lies. And when you lie, you're imitating him. God hates lying because Satan is the father of all lies. Satan stands in opposition to who God is and all that God does. And so God hates lying. So this morning, I think we can step back and say whatever our opinion might be about lying or whether we think it's okay situationally or if a white lie is okay and Compared to what? I guess a black lie. Uh, I don't know how we discover which lies are white or which lies are black, right? But we sort of classify them. But we can just step back from that this morning and say, God has an opinion on lying. 
He detests it. Solomon spoke of it. Jesus spoke of it. So we know God's opinion on lying. And so that's something that we should take to heart. So first thing that I want us to sort of anchor our thoughts this morning is that God detests lying. Secondly, you have a tendency to lie. You have a tendency to lie. I have that same tendency. We all have a tendency to lie. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at the person next to you and I want you to tell them, you have a tendency to lie. All right, tell them real quickly. Do it. All right. You've just spoken the truth to them. All right. this is from my heart. From your heart. All right. We all have a natural disposition towards lying, right? In, in our fallen and sinful nature, right? We, you know, as, as followers of Christ, we have two natures, right? And Paul talks about that Romans, in Romans. He talks about how the fact that we have now inherited a new nature, spirit of Christ lives in us, we, uh, but we still have our old nature, right? That's not completely eradicated yet, which sort of makes us like schizophrenic. Um, you know, it, we have these two different personalities going on, all right? And so in our natural disposition... Right, we have a tendency towards lying. Right, and, and maybe you can remember a time where you did that. Right, I, where you you thought about a situation, you thought it through, and you said, you know what? In order to navigate this situation, I am going to tell a lie to my mom, to my dad, right, to my teacher. Right. Yes, I practiced two hours today. <clears throat> Just come clean. They'll figure it out when you play. <laughs> Some people are what we would call almost professional liars, pathological liars. Right? They, they just lie all the time. Sometimes they don't even know when they're lying. But here's the thing. I don't think most of us are like that. Right? I think only a few of us would fall into that category. But if you're honest, you would say, I still have a tendency to lie. And a lot of times it's not even planned. Have you ever noticed that, that, that all of a sudden you just said something and you're like, that, that wasn't true. Have you ever had that moment, right? You didn't plan on lying. You didn't intend to lie. It wasn't your like desire to lie. You weren't even thinking, I'm going to lie. It just popped out and you lied. Why do you think it is that we lie? I mean, besides the fact that we, we have this tendency, we have a sinful nature, but why is it that we lie? Well, a, a little while ago, I did a Facebook poll. So this is extremely scientific and accurate information. Um, Actually, it's not. But these are some responses that I got from my very unscientific, very unacademic Facebook poll. Um, but I asked the question, why do you lie? And I got some responses. Number one, uh, I got uh, to make yourself or someone or something look or sound better. All right. So the idea there is to embellish. Sometimes we lie to make ourselves or something that we've done sound a little bit better than it is. Sometimes we lie to avoid confrontation. Right? We don't want to avoid confrontation, so we tell someone what they, we think they want to hear instead of the truth. Sometimes we lie to protect someone, and we can talk about that. Sometimes we're just in denial of the truth. We don't want to believe something is true, so we, we lie. Uh, someone said it's easy. All right, They lie because it's easy. Sometimes we lie because of fear, uh, being more concerned about what others think than what we know honors God. So these are just a few uh, of the responses that I got from people asking the question, why do we lie? I kind of want to look at it from a psychological standpoint this morning as well. And so I, I did a little research on lying and, and from those that have understand the, the human mind and you know it's a really complex piece of machinery, but why is it that we do the things that we do? Well, there's a few things that we do when we lie, but ultimately our lying is as the idea of wanting to protect something, right? So we, we lie to protect ourselves, to avoid painful consequences, shame, embarrassment. We lie to protect our interests, right? Sometimes the second most common reason that people lie is to get what they want, right? To get what you want, whether it's money, right? I mean, people lie to accumulate wealth. Sometimes people lie to get attention, Right? You know, it's like, hey, someone's just told a really great story. and Everybody loved that story. I'm, I bet everybody would love me if I, I had a good story. And so I'll just make up a good story about myself. Sometimes we lie to protect our image. We want other people to think well of us. And so we lie to protect our image. We, we want people to think something of us that we think will enhance how they feel about us. And so we lie to protect our image. 
Sometimes we lie to protect our resources. Have you ever been invited to go somewhere and you didn't want to go, but you didn't want to tell them that you didn't want to go, and so you made up a lie about why you couldn't go? All right. See, we, we lie to protect our resources, our time. All right, I don't want to do that thing. I'm not really excited about that. Sometimes we lie to protect others. Do you like my hair like this? Oh, yeah, it looks fine. No, it doesn't. Right? We lie to protect others, our feelings. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever lied to your parents? No, no, let me finish. I know you have. But <laughs> have you ever lied to your parents because you thought telling your parents what they wanted to hear would make them happier than telling them the truth? That you wanted to please them. Like your desires were good in a sense because you wanted your parents to be proud of you. You wanted your parents to be pleased with you. And so you told them a lie instead of the truth. We lie for a lot of different reasons, but at the heart of our lying, right, is the issue of what? The heart. Our tendency to lie comes from the same place that all of our words come. Our lies come from our heart. When you lie, it comes from your heart. And Jeremiah said something very interesting about the heart. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Jeremiah said this, he says, The heart is deceitful above all things, beyond cure. Who can understand it? And so Jeremiah helps us give some insight into our hearts and our tendency to lie. He says, your heart is deceitful above all things, is beyond cure in and of itself. Who can understand it? So this is why we lie, because we have a deceitful heart. And here's the thing, because we have a deceitful heart, we often lie to ourselves. My guess this morning is that you have told a lot of lies in life, all right? And you know, we're, we're all family here, like we can just be real and say, yes, we've all told a lot of lies in life. But I bet this, you've probably told more lies to yourself than any other person, right? You have a heart that tends to lie even to yourself. And sometimes we lie to ourselves, and then we start to believe the lies that we tell ourselves. So Jeremiah says, who can understand it? We have a tendency towards deceit, towards deception, and it comes from our heart. So two things so far. First of all, we know that God hates, He detests lying. We have a tendency and inclination towards lying. So number three, I want to challenge you with this. Lying less will lighten your load. Lying less will lighten your load. Here's the thing, as we think about telling the truth and asking God to transform the way we talk and specifically asking Him to help us be people who speak truth instead of lies. And listen, we can't transform our hearts ourselves, but God can and God does, right? God is truth and Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit lives in us. And so we have the power and the ability to speak truth when we walk in the Spirit and according to the power of God. But I also want you to know that not only is that right, not only should you do that, but it's good for you. Isn't, you know, isn't it amazing that, that when we discover that the things that God asks us to do, we ultimately realize that it's not only right, but it's for our good, that it's good for us. Lying less will lighten your load. How many of you have ever told a lie and then you had to tell a lot, many more lies to cover up that lie? Anybody? All right. Is it stressful? Right? It, get, it gets stressful, right? Because now you, you sort of become consumed with, I've got to cover my tracks, I've got to tell more lies, I've got to try to remember what I said and who I said it to. I have to remember, make sure I tell the story the same way. So lying is going to bring stress, but not only that is, most often, somewhere along the line, you're going to get caught, right? And it's going to cost you credibility. It's going to be a, a huge dent in your integrity, all right? Because now someone's going to say, I, I don't know if I can trust them. Right? They've, they've lied to me. They've broken that trust. Right? And we, we have this natural inclination towards lying, to protect ourselves. It just starts when we're kids. All right? my, my little girl, she's five years old, and when she thinks you know, the pressure's coming in, Lena, did you do this? Uh, yeah. Really? I know you didn't do that. What? She's wanting to protect that instinct, and so she has to be taught and trained. We have a tendency to lie, to try to cover ourselves. But what happens is, Eventually we get caught. It hurts our integrity. It hurts our trustworthiness. But here's the other thing. If you know Jesus Christ is your Savior, He loves you too much to let you get away with it. And so He's going to let you feel guilt. 
right? And now you're going to be carrying around this weight of guilt, this stress, this guilt that you're carrying for you. So here's the thing. Lying is just simply not good for you. Right? It, it's not good because it hurts your integrity. It's not good because it causes you stress and anxiety. So you have to keep covering it up. It's not good for you because it's going to cause guilt. And so God wants us to come clean. David was somebody who experienced what it was like to try to cover up his tracks with lies, with deception. And he was also somebody who experienced what it was like to come clean. And he describes how he felt when he came clean. He says, yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. He says, when we become honest with God and honest with ourselves and we confess our tendency to lie and we stop living lies, he says, we will experience God's freedom. He says, we'll experience God's joy. And so I want you to, there's freedom and there's joy in living honestly. You know what? Up front, it might mean a more difficult conversation. Up front, it might mean facing some consequences that you'd rather not face. But if you're willing to trust your Father in heaven, if you're willing to trust that He knows better than you do, right? How many of you think, just be, just we could step back and say, I believe God's more intelligent than I am. Anybody? All right. So we're in agreement, right? We believe that, right? So then we should live that. We say, if God is, is, is greater than I am, He's smarter than I am, He's more intelligent, His ways are higher than my ways, I can trust Him. Will it be easier up front? No. That's why one of those Facebook replies was what? Sometimes we lie because it's easy, right? It's the easy way to deal with the situation. It's the easy way in the moment. But it's always harder. It's always worse in the long run. And so God wants us to tell the truth. Psalm 34 11 says, Come, my children, and listen to me, and I will teach you to fear the Lord, to reverence God, to stand in awe of who He is. He says, Do any of you want to live a life that is long and good? Yes. He says, Then watch your tongue. Right? Watch your mouth. And He says, Keep your lips from telling lies. He says, If you want to enjoy life, and enjoy this life that God's given you. One of the secrets, one of the keys is lying less. Is choosing to speak honestly. And I, and I, I perfectly said lying less because I'm not under any delusion that, that now because of this great message that I've shared this morning that none of us, including myself, will ever tell a lie again. Right? Other people, we, we will be free. I wish that were true. But here's the thing, we will all still battle this tendency, right? This is not a war that we win, but a battle that we fight. And we fight it through the power of the Spirit every day. So lying less will lighten your load. Psychiatrists tell us this, to live with the intent to avoid doing anything we'd ever feel the need to cover up leads to a remarkably stress-reduced life. Right? Lying is, is, is not just what we speak, it goes beyond our words. He says it's how we live. And he says, if, if you live in such a way that you would never feel the need to cover up, that means the things that you do when you think no one is looking, the things that you do when you feel like no one is watching, right? Those things that you do then, would you be embarrassed if we put them up on the screen this morning? Like if we just took your whole life this past year and we just put it up on the screen, how many of you would run out the door before we showed it? All right, I, you, you'd, have to, you'd have to run behind me, right? But God wants us to think about our lives. And he says, he says, if you would live in such a way that you don't feel like you have to cover up, then your tendency to lie will be reduced. I don't have to lie about it. I don't have to cover it up because I'm living my life honestly. Who you are when no one is looking is who you are. Who you are when you're alone is who you really are. Because we can all put on the performance. We can all put on the act. We all can modify our behavior to be acceptable to those that we think they would like to see that behavior. But who we are when we're alone is who we are. And that's part of being honest, is living honestly. Then we'll speak honestly. Proverbs 11 verse 5 says, The godly are directed by their honesty. The, their, their lies are guided by their honesty, but the wicked will fall beneath the load of sin. Lying less will lighten your load. And I want you to have a lighter load. Listen, life will be hard enough, right? Problems, trials, stress, difficulty, they are part of life. God has ordained that we would go through difficult things, but we often add unnecessary difficulty to our lives. And lying will bring unnecessary difficulty and stress 
and pain and heartache into your life. And your Father in heaven wants to remove that load from you by helping you and empowering you to speak the truth. Because lying is sin. It's rebellion against your Father in heaven. Right? And sin is, you know, is, is something that, that we take far too lightly often as, as God's children. We know we're forgiven and that's wonderful and we are. Right? Romans chapter 8, no condemnation right, for those who are in Christ Jesus. We have that great freedom and that great privilege of knowing that God will never condemn us for our sin, past, present, or future. Not because of us, but because of Jesus and what he's done. But that does not mean that sin will not deeply affect our life and our walk with him. It does not mean that sin will not bring pain and sorrow and hurt into our life. And so sin is not something we should play with. Sin will take you further than you want to go. And lying certainly will. It will keep you longer than you want to stay and it will cost you more than you want to pay. Right? It's not a pet to be tamed. A lot of times we treat sin like we can just tame it. We can just get it under control. Right? But you can't tame sin. And so God wants to deal with our hearts today. The godly are directed by their honesty, but the wicked fall beneath their load of sin. Here's the thing. All of us could live a life that's more pleasing to God, less hurtful to others, less stressful for ourselves, if we choose to speak truth instead of lies. And how we do that is by asking God to fill us with His Spirit, to consume us and to control us, to enable us to speak the truth, not to try to do it in our own self, but to say, God, help me today to speak truth. Remove falsehood and lies from me. Psalm 119 verse 20 says, Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. If we would pray that, if we would ask that, God will answer that. When we pray prayers according to God's will, He always answers them. Right? And so when you ask God, God help me to speak truthfully and not to speak lies, God will answer that prayer. He'll empower you and He'll help you. And so that's my heart for you today, is to know what God thinks about lying, to be honest about your own tendency to lie, and to know that lying less will lighten your load. Would you bow your heads this morning? And let's just take a moment to to commit ourselves to the Lord this morning and to what He wants to speak and do into our life, what response that He wants to us to take. God always calls us to respond to His Word, not just to hear it, but to do it. And so I want you to think about how is it that God is calling me to do His Word, to live out His Word in this particular area. Maybe this morning it's just confessing and being honest with God and saying, God, there, there's been some ways that I've been deceitful and, and I've been practicing lying and, and I recognize that it is an offense to you and I want you to forgive me. And here's the thing, you have your Father's full assurance that He will forgive you, that He will cleanse you, that He will remove your sin as far as the east is from the west and remember it no more. And so come clean before your Heavenly Father. Experience His fresh joy and His forgiveness. But then ask Him to transform the way that you talk by choosing daily to ask God to help you speak truth. And it may be also that God's going to prompt you to, to ask someone to forgive you for lying to them, to come clean with them. Because God wants us to get our vertical relationships right with Him, but also our horizontal relationships with each other. It might not be comfortable, it might not be easy, but it will be so worth it because when we live in our lives in honesty, David says there is complete joy and freedom. And I want you to live in that joy and that freedom. Father, we, we come before you this morning. Father, we're grateful for your mercy. Father, we're grateful for your patience. Father, I thank you for how patient you have been with me. And Father, I pray this morning that we would be overwhelmed by your love for us, by your kindness, by your goodness, in such a way, Father, that it breaks down our hearts where we no longer want to lie. Father, where we no longer want to misrepresent the truth because we understand that we are your children. Father, you have rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and you've transferred us into your kingdom. And so, Father, we are now wanting to represent you. And, Father, you are truth. There are no lies in you. And so, Father, we know that when we lie, we fail to represent you. Father, we fail to honor you. We rebel against you. We confess that this morning. We ask you to forgive us. And Father, I pray that you would fill us with your spirit. Father, may we learn to speak truth in love, Father, to one another. Father, so that our lives, Father, not only will please you and honor you and glorify you and represent you well, 
but Father, so that we can experience less stress, less heartache, less guilt, less weight that we're carrying around in life, and that we can enjoy and experience your joy in our lives. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.